I always get nervous before a shoot, before any kind of shoot. No matter if it's, if it's photo or video, I'm always really nervous. Sometimes it's just stills, just photography, sometimes it's video, sometimes it's a social media campaign. So right now, believe it or not, all this stuff is being sorted and organized for a, for a multi-day shoot that I'm doing, like a digital online commercial for a car company here in Northern Ireland. I'd say I'm pretty good at organizing things and people together but I still shit myself every time I have to do it. And this has got myself and my friend David, who's owned a Sourcecape, he's a dronologist, uh, you know, the commercial drone pilot, very, very good at what he does. It's a multi-day shoot with multiple cars, and it's a whole bunch of different locations around the country. That's very difficult to organize at this time of year, and people are saying, don't make it look too wintry. I'm like, it's the middle of winter. Like, the shoot was supposed to be last week. We had to cancel it because there was snow everywhere and sleet and rain and gale force wind. So last week I made the call and postponed it until this week. Now, when I postponed it, I'll be honest, there was this little sigh of relief. This like, <sighs> I can procrastinate that shoot for another week now because of the nerves. It's all to do with the nerves. There's always a lot of stuff, things that like, you don't, things you take for granted. I don't need an extension lead, we're gonna be outside. When you get used to the comfort of a, of a studio, shooting stuff in your studio, I do find myself sometimes being like, oh shit, I left that in the studio. And then having to like make a solution on location. So I went up to the studio and I just basically grabbed everything that I thought I was gonna need for the shoot. It's only when I'm packing things up, have I got the things that I need? Will I be able to shoot what I wanna shoot with the equipment that I have? Gear anxiety. That is a whole video on its own. You know, sometimes you'll be out doing something and someone goes, are you doing that like that? Why do you not do it like this? And you're like, well, for a start, I don't own that shit. So that's why I'm not doing it like that. You get the point, you're like, do I need a light stand? For the sake of sticking one light stand in there, it won't do any harm. Reflectors, always a good idea. Twist it. These things are the cheapest and the best things to have in your bag for reflecting light or diffusing direct sunlight is coming with me. Batteries, the hardest thing to order to Northern Ireland are batteries because they don't trust us with batteries. Over here. I always carry a little like pouch of goodies, just like cable ties, zip ties, Allen keys, tools, tape, loads of headphones, all the shit that gets in the way everywhere else. You know that drawer you have in your kitchen? Everyone just throws everything into that one drawer. If you like, if you need blue tack or scissors or toenail clippers or that one Phillips screwdriver that no one can ever find, old photographs, individual batteries, paper clips, that's effectively my camera version of that drawer. Drawer, drawer, or drawer, that's a weird word. Very aware of it. You charge the batteries, those are for lights and for my external monitor for this camera and the other main A7 III, the DJI Ronin. If they're upside down, they're empty. If they're the right way up, they're charged. That's my logic. Brevity bags not coming with me on this shoot. This shoot, I need all my gear in one bag that's durable and robust and there's a lot of stuff. So I'm using the uh, Low Pro AW450. Like this whole week, I've just been really nervous about this shoot. It gets me thinking a lot about this this phrase, this terminology called imposter syndrome. And it's definitely all charged. Look at that, all ready to rock. See, right way up, all charged. It, imposter syndrome is this psychological state of mind. You don't think you're good enough for it. You feel like a, a bit of a fraud. That's a, such a serious word, isn't it? You know, you're walking around there with your, with your camera, filming this job and you're telling people, yeah, 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 do this move there, oh yeah, I'm just gonna reshoot this from this angle. And the whole time, in the back of your mind, you're thinking, someone's gonna catch me out. At some point, someone's gonna realize that I don't know what I'm doing here, I'm making this up as I go along. The knowledge that you know is outweighed by what you think everybody else knows. It creates a form of self-doubt in your head. Now, I have felt like this literally for every single job I've ever done. From when I was a junior graphic designer. I'll do that, I wanna do this job, I really I really think I can do this. And then when someone goes, okay, you're like, oh shit, I actually have to do it now. I've said I'll do it, and now I have to work on how to do it. Definitely something that I've struggled with for a long time. And 
defenseless zone in the middle, right? Where you may do something, know something, or find something really easy, but you discount its value. So, you know, you, you don't appreciate how valuable it is. And where those two things meet together, that's this that little area called imposter syndrome. And the thing is, I speak to so many people and there's so many other people who feel the same way. Spray it on the cloth, not on the camera. Always like to clean the gear before I go. Make sure all the dirt's gone. Sometimes clean the sensors if I'm feeling, if I'm feeling really fruity. I feel like the imposter syndrome has got worse as I've got older. And I think that's because as I've got older and I've got more experienced, things have become easier and I've got maybe quicker at doing them or more comfortable with it. Um, you find yourself like, I, I find myself discounting and deva like, like discounting that value even more, you know, than I did originally. So sometimes you'll be out in the shoot and you'll bump into someone else who does something differently and they'll say to you, oh, I can't believe you do something like that. And, and then you immediately go from like completely confident in what you were doing to completely going, oh, I haven't got a clue what I'm doing. This guy clearly knows what he's doing. But the reality of it is he knows his way of doing it and I know my way of doing it. But for some reason it, it, it materializes as this self-doubt imposter syndrome. Really, really annoying. Prime example of that is, is gimbals. I do not like using gimbals. I have a Ronin S and for the most part it's great. It does the job, it's good, but I can get away with so many shots not using a gimbal because I use an A7 III and it's in body stabilization is unbelievable. And I'm generally quite a stable human being. Not necessarily there, but physically, like, like I'm pretty smooth. I don't jitter, I'm not really shaky in that. So I can get away with a lot of it. So what I tend to do is I plan my shots to accommodate me shooting handheld. I, my style is very handheld. So while somebody else might shoot an entire video all gimbal based, I could shoot an entire video all handheld. And the video has the same outcome, it has the same effect in the end. It becomes a different style. And when you start running into the issues is when you start doubting the fact that you can do that. And they're like, I can't believe you don't shoot that on a gimbal. And you're like, well, I was fine shooting it handheld. Then you get this face. Oh, oh, don't know buddy, I would shoot down a gimbal. And then self doubt kicks in. Imposter syndrome. Everybody else knows everything. Everybody else shoots stuff on a gimbal. Here I am, cowboying around handheld, but turns out it's because you knew what you were doing in the first place. And that's where you have to stop and just be like, yo, I got this. And then just hope the fact that you've got it. Otherwise, otherwise I'll be like, I told you so, should have used the gimbal. Which has admittedly happened before. You know, you can't win them all, but you can at least put in a good fight. I suppose just going from myself, when it moved from just me doing a design in an office to actually having to art direct something, an idea that's your own. And when, I suppose when you're the one who's responsible for it, like so the other day, if you cock the whole thing up, it's like Dill cocked that up. So the, I remember those, you know, those first couple of jobs that I did and they were, they were real game changers. They were really scary for me. Uh, it's not really my nature just to sit there. So I'm always like, yo, I'll do this. I've got a solution. I tend to be very problem solving based. Make sense? Is that a sentence? I'm a, I'm a realist. I like to say I'm a realist. So there's a perfect world and there's a perfect client and there's a perfect budget. And very rarely do any of those things align. So you have to be quite realistic in how you do stuff. Otherwise you're always going to be doubting everything you do. I'm the guy in the shoot when they go, oh, it's raining now. And I go, ah, oh, well, let's make it work. Let's just make the, let's just make it work. It is raining. That's a fact. We can either wait or we can just try to find a way to make it work or shoot with the rain. Now that doesn't always work, but that's kind of, I don't really like dwell, like dwelling on problems. I'm just like, right, that is a problem. We've addressed that. So we all, we're all in agreement that that right there is a problem. I get really annoyed in situations where everyone keeps talking about the problem. You know, unless that problem was, can you believe the camera spontaneously combusted and blew your man's hands right off his arm? Then let's talk about that for a bit. That doesn't happen a lot. But when it's like, can you believe it started raining? In fact, just don't talk to me about weather. Just ever. If you ever meet me, please don't chat to me about weather. I hate to talk about weather. What is the solution? And that solution, that, I, that way of working it out is that's the key for how a lot of what I do works. And I'm not saying it's the same for every single person. Some people are better 
um, sh you know, working meticulously with a plan, with a script. I'm not, I'm, I'm always like, can we, is it a rule or is it a suggestion? Do you know, should we, shouldn't we do it or could we probably have a bash? Being agile, being able to solve problems on the go, being able to change everything at the drop of a hat because shit just didn't pan out the way you thought it was gonna be. And I think that that is where the imposter syndrome comes from. By the way, this lens. 28 to 135 Sony G cinema lens. Focus ring, aperture ring, delightful. Lens caps, they're never on your lens. They're in your pockets or lying in your bag somewhere. There's no audio in this in this video, which is great. It's just gonna be footage overlaid with music, so it's, it's easy enough. I always carry like a bum bag with me. I stick things in this like a clamp, a spare lens, a, a wipe, a cloth, a spray, the little, the little air thing. Whatever that thing is. I haven't been on a few TV commercial shoots and seen gaffers, right, running around with this like utility belt. And I was like, that's so cool. That's so cool and so functional. I was like, what do they know <laughs> that I don't? And again, it was imposter syndrome. I'm like, oh, they've obviously like these dudes. I mean, I remember one day wearing this and being out and someone was like, what's the bum bag about? I was like, bro, you don't run a bum bag? And they were like, no. I'm like, dude, look what you could do. And I showed them all the shit that was in it. You just assume the assumption is that the other person knows more about what they're talking about. And when that guy did it to me, I was like, yeah, man, how can you not run a bum bag? I think the easier it gets and the more comfortable you get doing it, the more imposter syndrome kicks in. Um, I've always felt like if I'm going into a shoot totally at ease, totally comfortable with what I'm doing, like I'm not shitting myself just a little bit. I don't feel like I'm pushing myself enough. So that area of, uh, what's the word? Content content that word it's like when i was a kid in school i remember this teacher in school saying to me never use the word nice to describe something because it's the worst word he stuck with me someone goes oh what was what's that restaurant like oh it's nice that basically means it's average at best it's not shit but i'm not gonna go back oh what do you think of my outfit yeah that's nice yeah they don't like it they don't they don't hate it but they don't like it and for me the word content is like, it's equally as shit as the word nice. Well, a lot of descriptive words there. So I try to stay out of that zone and try to stay in the zone of what the fuck am I doing? What is going on? Because we're all imposters in this world, aren't we? Does that mean Nathan? Not really. I wish it did. I wish that was a really powerful way to end this video, but it's just gonna end with me going, thanks for watching. Hope this meant something. I gotta pack this shit for the shoot and I'll catch you in next week's video, Wednesday again. All right, take it easy. Thank you.